Hey, what's up and welcome everyone to the Iceman Isaac Academy, the second channel of the Warzone Academy dedicated specifically to coaching every single day. In today's video, we're taking part in the How to Play Like the Pros series, and I'm taking a look at my favorite pro in the scene, who is Breadman, possibly the best mouse and keyboard player in the scene, definitely top five, one of the nicest guys. I'll have all of his information linked at the end of today's video. So we're going to be taking a look at his gameplay where he goes against some other pros like TP, Symphony, and even more and plays solo quad and duo quad and just completely dominates the lobby. You're going to learn so much about the angles that he holds, the strategies that he used, and a lot, a lot, a lot of value in this video. Please, guys, do me a favor. This is only the third video on the Iceman Isaac Academy. Do me a favor, drop a like on it and comment. It does so much for the algorithm and getting this channel some early growth. Without further ado, I'm going to be reviewing all this gameplay live on Twitch and hope you guys enjoy the rest of today's video. Peace. Without a doubt, one of the most mechanically talented players on mouse and keyboard. Uh, I would say him and Huskers are probably the two best in the competitive scene. Uh, but on top of that, he's just got fantastic vibes. You might be. I'm nowhere near you, but you might be dead. Oh, it's deep. It's deep. Oh, wow. So he's going against one of the best players in the game right now, which is Teep. But TP, if you don't know him, uh, Tyler, he was Tyler Polchow, I think, right? He was one of the best competitive Call of Duty players of all time. Um, one thing that you're going to notice, because it seems like he's duo squatting. Focus, and I can already tell because I've played with him before, is all about minimizing exposure to multiple lines of sight at once. You might be dead. So you'll I'm notice here, especially you might be. I'm not as he sees two people, he's not peeking way over the edge. He's always trying to position himself because right now he has zero plates to that he... he in a way that he can instantly get back under cover. Boom gets that, oh, even against deep, the best players deep. in the world. Oh, deep, I'm coming. He's not going to let himself get it's traded hard. out. Doesn't re-peak the same uh, angle, swings work. wide. Once again, peaking a different angle. Coming, coming, coming. Is that him shooting? Yeah. They're going to go up in the uh, the top room. B behind you, behind you, behind you. It's him. Oh, no, no, one shot, one shot. It's Sally, I think. Yeah, it's Sally. I got Sim, I got Sim. Got him. So that Go! was Sally. Woo! Sally is a dog you might know from TikTok. I did not hear him, dude. That was Merc, who was also a previous like legend in the Call of Duty scene, and then Symphony, uh, who, who who cheats. So really good team wipe there by Brad. But throughout that entire fight, you could tell he's always limiting his exposure. As soon as he takes out that shot, right, instantly goes back down to try to limit his exposure to angles. Nice life ping on his on his partner's point to uh to get it done and. Uh, Pretty nice squad wipe of uh, four of the best players in the game. And no, Symphony does not cheat. It's a meme. He's baiting you every single time. He's baiting you. Dude, they were looking sweaty like a bouncing buddy. Yeah, put it on the yeah. typical bread man, completely yeah. unfazed. Is that guy gonna run from you? So you can get away? Bread's holding a really cheeky angle right here. Kind of waiting on this guy right here to rotate out. It's a little bit risky. The chow, he could be behind the rock, prone out. He could be holding the close angle. Really nice movement there. Advanced on me. And what he does is he slides in, right? And he, he's using that rock to break their angle of sight, right? So he's sliding in. That guy can't see him. But what he does is he does a little shimmy. And all he's doing right there is trying to get the player to break their aim. Because as long as your opponent is moving in the opposite direction that you are inputting on your stick you are going to break their aim assist. So this is your this is your right stick on your controller, right? Okay. And this is the player you're trying to aim at. If you see them strafing to the right, you should be tilting your stick to the right to match it. But what all players do is they'll put in a little shimmy or they'll fake one direction and then cut hard the other in order for you to be holding right while the player is going left and it splits and diverges that aim assist and it'll crush your aim assist. Um, and that's exactly what the goal of good movement is, is to get that player. You can see all those shots that are going behind him. That means he snapped that player's aim assist. Bro, he has stopping power. Bro. Oh, he has, he says stopping power rounds. These guys are on the ground over here. All right. What about against mouse and key players? It's in close range with mouse and key is purely skill. And at the same time, a mouse and key player is going to try to track you. Right? You're trying to you're trying to track the player. And then as soon as they make a cut, 
you're no longer tracking at the same rate that you were and your reaction time now comes in and you have to cut back. So that's why it's so easy for mouse and keyboard players to track someone who's just sprinting laterally all the way across the field. It's because it's, you just develop that constant rate and then you hold it. But as soon as you start cutting back and forth, aim assist doesn't help at all. Brad, once again, putting himself in an awkward 1v4 situation. Oh, they're really cracked too. They're really good. Okay. Brett is completely sarcastic. That guy is not oh, cracked at all. Top you, you have. He knows he only really has one player left to worry about. This player up here, as we always talk about, has the dot, but then it has the arrow above it. So he knows that player is above him. So his last threat is this player down here or getting the thirst on that player. What? Notice, he, he, he plays on, it beautifully. So he swings out, and he's on, instantly checking that corner to make sure that guy isn't looking over the top. If he's looking over the top, he's just going to instantly beam him. Checks again, and then he's using this player as bait. So, so common to bait out other members of the squad with their teammates' life. Kill that guy instantly. Doesn't go for the thirst, because he knows what's going to happen first is not this guy possibly self-reviving. Of course, he already self-revived, so it wouldn't happen. But it's his teammate pushing up and just completely decimates him. Now, for me right there, I know this guy had already self-revived, right? So he's not a threat. I would have kept shooting and possibly tried to thirst that guy by shooting him in the leg before he falls back over the edge. There's not really much else Bread can do. He can go for the risky grab. Which by that time, that guy could have been ready for it. And there's a proxy mine. And a cluster. Fuck the cluster. What's going on? Wow. No, the cluster, come, come, bro. Come, come, come. Sorry, and he's in a really bad spot now. Right. I it's Sally. Boy. Sorry, the cluster. Fuck. Oh my goodness. No, the And so he basically makes the decision off of this timing. Okay, boom. I lost one plate. If I were him, I would hard chow instant, right? As soon as I see that cluster coming, I'm like, I want to finish this fight now. So I would hard chow right now because we know we just kind of beamed that guy earlier. But unfortunately, Brett doesn't have any bullets in his stoner. He's got like, I think it's zero. So he can't, or he's got eight. So he can't chow. He pulls out his OTS, realizes he can't win this gunfight before the cluster starts coming in. These are all like micro decisions happening in the guy's head. And the reason why he's sitting so close to that oh, wall yeah. is he's trying to cut under and get some cover. And he opts not to chow this with an OTS, right? Because he would definitely lose that fight with an OTS with only Here, minimal man, health. And just sorry. opts to only get Boy. into cover. And sorry, the cluster ugh, fuck. barely squeezes into cover. Sure. From there, <laughs> get some loot. Wait, behind me? All the way. The other guys that Wait, they were killing. Me? All the way down the lane, I think. Looking. Same guy I fought earlier. End up coming back. Jumping, jumping, jump behind you. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, oh yeah, they <laughs> cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and just a really clean play here. We'll walk it one more time. So he starts getting shot in the back once again, that damage indicator. I can't tell you how many people don't know that this thing exists. Turn in the direction of the damage indicator. You're going to find me. All the way down the lane, I think. Looking. Same guy I fought earlier. And then he instantly starts hearing those gunshots behind him, which cause him to turn around. He hears the guy parachuting to his left, jumping, jumping, jumping. and he fakes it to make it look like this, like he's going behind cover. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna die, I'm going behind cover. But what he's actually doing is causing this player to get really confident that he's about to win the gunfight. And this player, instead of aiming down sight and currently shooting at Breadman like he is, is going to start sprinting, and while he's sprinting, he's going to put himself in that tax sprint animation. And as we know, when you're in the tax sprint animation, you have a longer sprint to fire speed and a longer aim down sight speed. And so it's going to take that player longer as soon as Brad reaches, which we already know he's going to do. And then even with less plates, Brad's going to be able to win the gunfight, not because of time to kill for a gun, but because of this guy's sprint to fire animation. I'm right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they... <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. But the team cheating. shot absolutely fries him. And it looks like that guy was still aiming down sight, but that's the theory behind a quick reach out is you make it look like you're about to die. And especially in a situation like this where you don't have a lot of area to plate up. Um, like you don't have a lot of area to like run around and finesse and plate up and go through some hallways and stuff. Like you basically have to reach out. You're trying to get that player to be in a tax sprint animation. That's where customs get really fun, where pros are playing against pros. 
because we know pros are going to reach out. So then it's like this chess match of like, okay, I cracked that guy, but I'm going to keep aiming down side on this angle because I think he's going to reach out me. And if he reach out me, then you win an easy gunfight. If he doesn't reach out you, well, now all of a sudden he's ran away and you've missed your opportunity to capitalize. Red, once again, on the bounty wave. Like push push Here's a solo set of footsteps underneath him. Pushes in. You'll see a lot of a lot of players playing with throwing knives because well, with that OTS, you've got limited magazine capacity, so they're using the throwing knife to thirst, so that way he can go from this gunfight where he uses 10 bullets to down that guy and then instantly go into the next gunfight without having to reload his SMG and can still easily get oh, another knock to with guns to spare. Yeah. Or bullets to spare. <laughs> oh, I got bands, dude. What? Rest in peace. Same thing. Stacking bounties. <laughs> pushing UAVs. Hunting down a most wanted, which is basically free. Nice little jump spot right there. Oh, and what Brad was doing right there, the reason he didn't shoot was not because he wasn't trying to take his teammates' kill. It's because he has stopping power. And he knows this guy is dead, right? Just based off the fact that his teammate's going to get the kill. Um, but he's holding on to it because he has stopping power and he doesn't want to burn his stopping power on an easy kill. He has more stopping power here, but you want to save stopping power for how rare it is. Dude, Vaughn tried to hit it. Dude, that's fun. Yeah, let's go. So boom, once again, they don't mark yeah. it this time, it doesn't look like, but yeah. they know that the buildings, oh, hey, these guys the house is by the by. Oh, they're good. We are low. I'm trying to go in this building right here, okay? Oh, they're good. They look really good. <laughs> Sarcastic. They don't look good. They're the default skins. Not moving with much purpose. Now, keep in mind, you can't say it's a bot lobby, but uh, there are some demons in there, obviously, because they ran into... Symphony, Teep, and all those other guys. Oh, the one inside? The other Red one. is just, one, dude. once again, okay, using that stopping right power here. utility as much as he possibly can. We can see he's, he loaded in that stopping power, and he's just holding every bullet, right? He shoots eight. He doesn't want to use any more. Shoots more. As soon as he gets the knock, doesn't want to shoot anymore. Gets another knock here. Okay, now you're out of stopping power. Okay, now I can use the, the extra bullets to thirst people. But you, you never want to use stopping power the one inside? The other to thirst, you one, dude. Okay, to thirst okay. opponents. You want to get it for knocks. It was a red skin, red girl. Car, car, car. Yeah. Old stoner was absolutely disgusting. There's another one here, though. Tempt. Tempt. Red feels car, comfortable car, car. taking these shots because he knows his next piece of cover is that window, and he's going to hear him running up the stairs. That's why he feels comfortable taking on a totally separate gunfight. There's another one here. Um, but I was going to say, it's really great comms on his part. Like I said, I've competed with him. You want to be very descriptive with the comms of who you're who you're like trying to take on. It makes great like it, it takes away a lot of confusion whenever you're playing with teammates when you say, "Hey, it's a rose skin or it's a red skin or it's a girl, whatever it may be." If you can give some descriptive factor, especially when you're saying, "Oh, this person's one shot," his teammate may child the corner. That's a completely different skin, and so if you can say, "Hey, rose skin is one shot," obviously it sucks when the full team is rose skins, but. Cheating? That level no of detail games. really helps. Boom! Finishes a gunfight straight oh back to marking the next target, getting as much utility out of that UAV as he possibly can. I can't stress that enough. There's really nothing. That's a good roto. Get in there. All right. So boom, gets information. He sees once again both of these are up arrows on his UAV, so he knows he's up top. He's aimed on sight walking, which is completely silent, just like crouch walking. And he should notice that he actually has a player lower heading towards the buy, so it's this, this, this guy right here. Tries to pre-fire the last angle that he saw him. Couldn't see him very well anymore after the explosion. Most likely going to pull out his OTS. He does. Gets a stun hit marker. He's going to know he's close left. But on the other side of the wall. Drop shot so he doesn't get hit by the proximity. Instantly gets back into cover in case he gets spammed by utility. Once again, never re-peaking the same angle if he doesn't have to. Kind of doing his due diligence to check the most likely angles that the enemy would be approaching from. Oh, he jumped up, you psychopath. And I, I really want to emphasize this right real quick. Okay, this right here. This player right here sees him is aim down sight and is going to get shots off on bread first. 
while a good player probably could just completely snap on him and maybe get the kill with a drop shot or a finesse or like a complete ego challenge, it's almost never worth it, especially when you're trying to take on multiple gunfights. So Brad, even though he could snap on that guy's forehead, opts to get behind cover as quick as he possibly can. So that way he doesn't get down to like, you know, 1 HP or 50 HP or 100 HP so he can continue to fight the rest of the people while getting the max utility out of his own health. Oh, he jumped up, you psychopath. Reach out aggressively. Ego child? Oh, and as they both say, that is an ego child that they both... What a psychopath. They both child without full plates. They definitely could have played it up there. But know when you've lost a fight before you've lost it. Don't ego child just because you can see someone and because you can shoot them. Dip back into cover. Even the best players in the world will do it. Um. All right, well, then let's just get car, up the mountain. Car, car, car. Car, 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 car. So they yeah, see car rolling right. up. Enemy UAV, UAV as well. They pop a UAV on them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or someone. Kind of bad comms on Brad's part. Oh, I'm going to be honest. Or someone. He spotted him earlier. He may not have spotted him. I, I spotted him like on this side right here, right? You, you can see him. I would be screaming behind you. Maybe he thinks he can have him covered and he might just be playing some morning games and isn't feeling super sweaty. Oh, daddy on me? What? Oh, yeah, dead silence. Contact. Contact. And it looks like it's Symphony's team all over again. Good self. Bernie almost gets the self off. Brett is trying to wallbang to give him oh, cover. Once again, noticing that that gunfight is lost, getting undercover, not trying to ego it. And now he most likely has to 1v3 three of the best players in the game between Sally. TP and Merc. Okay, Brad. Let's go. It's gonna work. Yeah. Every single time, he's just... Yeah. So when you're playing against a really tight uh, team, a really good team, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take really tight angles every single time. And you're, you're either gonna, like, step back, you're, you're gonna, like, peak this angle, and you're gonna step back, and then you're gonna step over a little bit more, and then peak this angle... And you're going to step back and you're going to step over a little bit more and you're going to peek this angle. You're never just going to like wide swing and check everything all at once when you're worried about getting beamed. That's kind of what that jiggle peek work. was right there. Yeah. It's like, okay. Oh, there's someone there. Instantly nice. going back to a different angle. Never re-peeking the same angle twice. And see what that little, that's what that little yeah, jiggle angles. movement is. Is like slowly trying to expose yourself to more and more angles sure. to get more and more information. But not overexposing yourself and getting yourself killed. One down. So now he knows. One is down. Good idea. Yeah. I'm dippity and skippity. Yep. Idea, yeah. Interesting. It's an idea, um, and it's a good one. Great one. With one player knocked, still gonna be he opts to rotate out, There's no way. Dude, I, I knowing that he can take road. the high ground. Right. There's only five teams left, 11 people, 12 people yeah, left right. alive, so you know it's a super sweaty lobby. He's really just playing his life, trying to get a high ground, trying to get a power position. At that point, he was already set up in a building, right? There were like a whole bunch of buildings. There was a hill here. There was a building here where a guy was shooting from the second story attic. Bread was in the long triple white. He downed one person here, but couldn't get the thirst. He's getting shot at from this angle. Person downed right here, but not finished. Oh my God, a star, not an X. And then a person right here that's most likely going to get the res, and they're going to know his location. At that point, once all of those players are resed up, you're going to have three people pushing in like absolute maniacs, stunning, fragging, simtexing, C4ing, and Bread's trying to get himself an opportunity to get another clean pick. Now, granted, that team's likely going to res Symphony, and now he's going to have to take on a 1v4. I'm safe. I'm safe. <laughs> Bread was trying to bait that guy. Oh my god! Fantastic shots. <laughs> my editor almost left in a Twitch ad. Oh man. Charles aggressively doesn't spot that guy instantly, but that's just gun skill right there. Hits a quick slide cancel and completely beams that guy off the heady. Oh man. Still doesn't have enough money to get the res off, and so now he's rotating, like we talked about earlier, up towards that power position to possibly spot where the really sweaty team is. He's getting information, the zone is closing in, and he's most likely not going to shoot unless he can get a knock. If you see someone in an open piece of transition, like this guy right there, he could probably shoot at. 
and with the old stoner, possibly get a knock. Sees a guy walking up the hill. And almost got a knock, but couldn't hit the shots. You'll notice, like, he, he's not really shooting at those players unless, A, they're way out in the open, like this guy, in a piece of transition, right? This guy's transitioning from one place to another, and in that, there's no man's land where he can get a knock. Or there's a player who's already getting shot at, right? You can see that trail right there. That player that was on that head glitch was already getting shot at. So he might already be weak, and Brad can get, like, maybe one or two shots and steal a kill. But he's not going to, like, take shots on players who are, you know, what he's going to basically waste ammo on. So now Brad has to make a decision. He's got a knock. And he needs to decide whether he's going to stay or whether he's going to capitalize. Me personally, I capitalize. He knocks Sally as a dog. That's one of the better players out of that sweaty four-man. You want to try to make the most out of it. Nah, nah, he cuts it. his shoot so that way that roof can provide line of right. sight cover. On your left somewhere. I don't know if you ever and then takes the high ground yeah. and isn't instantly looking for the thirst, but is looking to get these knocks. So I got the my building. Might help you. Yeah. He's got the team yeah. deep, and he's got a team okay. in his building. He calls it out. So I got the team in my building. Might help you. Yeah. Wait, wait. Nice. Wow. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but simply bread throwing that stun may have most nice. likely baited out. Like, he's stunning me. Merc may have felt like he could rotate. Shots. Almost gets I think the it's knock. Two below you. Yep, he never got the full on Sally as a dog. He just got another knock on Merc. So it's most likely that full team. Ammo here. And he's running out of AR ammo. There's there's uh there's loot behind you. Yeah. There's a lot of loot behind you. Reload your stoner if you can. Gas is inbound. Marking you safe. Oh, you probably win that gunfight with aim assist there, Bread. 1v2v2? Yes. What he's trying to do this entire time both, is just reposition uh, Chinese diner the different places. I'm right there on the left. Yep. Should be able to grab that. Where the yep. enemies aren't already established. But at this point, he can now rotate in because of this next zone. And everyone else, that's the two that are currently camping here and the two that are camping here, have to rotate in into him. If I'm these players, I rotate left and take this shack. Um, but these players are most likely going to have to rotate into bread. If he's smart, he takes top trip white again and holds that. That's all wow. That's all wow. Or he sings Nicki Minaj. One of the options. You so he's it. opting for the same thing. And the teams are Where shooting is? each other. He could easily get shot in this transition. It's a very, very risky cross. But at the same time, it's an even better power position than triple white. It's got to be a little bit hard to, like, utility spam him if he's out in the open as opposed to, like, inside of a building. Now he's just holding, waiting for Where the crosses. Get in? Building in front of you is in. One. 1v1v1. One. 1v1v1. One. One. One one one. Yep. So fortunately, he doesn't have to take on every single person. Uh, earlier, it was that full squad, Merc, uh, Sally, Teep, and Symphony. But fortunately, actually, by him wrapping all the way up, taking out the team in Fire Station, they most likely got taken out by another team. Now it's a 1v1v1 situation, basically playing solos. Unless another team goes for a res, which they could. Notice, ever standing still, yet. both laterally uh -huh. and vertically. He's jumping. He's crouch spamming. He's always keeping himself on the move. And I mean, your position's great. Double dude. checking. His flank every here you get a flank and there to make sure right, everything. I don't. I don't safe. think you can disengage though. Yeah, check it. There is a possibility, and he's calling it out because of this ridge line that someone could have wrapped all the way deep right. I don't see how he would disengage. So he's keeping an eye on it. That's true. But he's so trying to stay stack. focused to make sure they Dude, don't take the power position on him. Behind me. So he goes and runs around, double checks as much as he can. And then gets back just to give him that little bit of sanity that I'm pretty oh, sure I cleared one's off. In the trip. One's in the trip building. Okay. I don't know how he got in here, though. There was a sniper. Just watch that. 
Once again, checking the yeah, lower right. Nice. Perfect call yeah. timing on that. Spots Same. him. That's right. Nah. But that triple white building is still going to be safe on the very, very edge. So he's got one player inside of triple white, and he's got one player deep on his right. Bread's in a really rough spot, but fortunately, with kind of like this divot right here, he can probably make some plays to keep himself safe for another zone. In this building in front of me, that's just a random. Okay. Well, that was his skin then. Gotta be really careful with this angle. There's really nowhere that he can quickly cut to. If he needed a cut to cover to his right, he would have to mount or mantle, which is risky. Or... Nice. nice. Yeah, okay. Dang, bro. Plays it perfectly. Yeah. What he does is he takes a couple shots, doesn't even bother reloading, and instantly makes the other player think that he's going to get the third party. This guy starts getting a little curious. Red rips his yeah, head okay. off. Dang, bro. Go ahead. You, you can almost hear, you can almost hear him say it, right? Like, oh dang, bro, I heard like he heard other teams fighting. And then Brad hits the drop oh, shot. JJ drops oh, 31. 31. Level 31. That was... oh, fuck. I... Against some good teams. There's some bots in there. Maybe. But regardless, oh, to be solo squatting, you definitely got man? to be oh, 31? a solid player. For those of you who don't know, for all these videos where I'm reviewing other pros in the gameplay, I will have their Twitch channel linked in the description. I would highly encourage you to check it out. Brett is one of the best players in the game. Absolute class act, both in and out of game. Uh, recently started pursuing content creation full time, and I really think you're going to be seeing a lot of him in the Warzone scene. Uh, so if you want to support him, make sure to follow him on Twitch. His link and my link will be both linked in the pinned comment of today's video. So if you want to follow us, make sure to join us over on Twitch. I'm doing all of this coaching live over on Twitch. If chat wants to say hi to YouTube real quick, and thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. Make sure to drop a like on it if you did. Comment, because these are new videos on the Iceman Isaac second channel. Subscribe. You probably haven't subscribed already, right? Maybe subscribe to the main channel. And I will see you all live over on Twitch for the next Warzone Academy video.